This is a quick demonstration that shows how to take care of a particular kind of problem that's very common. Now, the reason that I have this problem is not really a common one, but the problem itself certainly is. Zooming in here to this image, you'll find that there are lots of little colorful blips. Sometimes this happens for various reasons. You'll end up with colorful blips in your images, and you may have gone so far in processing that um, it may not be possible to somehow reject them or figure out a, you know, some kind of cosmetic correction to, to take care of them. So how, then, would I do it in an image like this? There are so many that I couldn't possibly go around and somehow manually take care of them. There's got to be a way to identify them um, globally using, in this case, of course, pixel math. And then, of course, the next step, once you've identified them, create a mask and then do something to get rid of them. That's what I'd like to demonstrate. Just so you know, there should also be a set of green pixels here. The, let me explain what my particular um, application is. I was trying to create an image of a comet. And what is typically done is you create a starless version of the comet field. Uh, so it's just the comet itself. And then you also create a star field um, and blend those two together. That's what I was attempting to do. But because of the vagaries of my data, I didn't have very good data. All I have is a single R, G, and B image. There's no rejection. There wasn't a way for me to get rid of um, hot pixels and uh, cosmic rays, which is what most of these blips are. They're the cosmic rays that occurred in each of the uh, color channel, in each of the data images. So there wasn't a way to get rid of them. They're just there. But there may be a way to process them out. That's what I'd like to show. So bringing up pixel math then, I think you can very quickly recognize that normally the way that you examine pixels to make a decision to do something is to look at their brightness value. But here, the brightness isn't as critical. Um, in fact, it's not what we're going to use because the red blips are of various brightnesses. So that can't be the criterion for us to examine to know whether it's a uh, one of these red or blue or some other colored blips. We need to actually look at the values in the channels themselves. So here in pixel math there is a way to evaluate the the uh, the values recorded in each channel. If we wanted to we can use the full expression instead of a single expression and these then become the way to look at each channel individually. So the first field here then becomes the red channel. This is the green, the blue. So this is actually the zero channel. Green is channel number one, and blue is channel two. Um, there are three channels, but it starts at zero. So there is a shortcut. We can, we can actually write expressions in this manner, putting them in the channels. But there is a shortcut for doing it. Um, anytime you have a view or an image, you can refer to a channel by using that very notation of channel 0, channel 1, and channel 2 for being R, G, and B. Uh, so I'm going to type it explicitly here by actually typing the name starfield underscore RGB. This ref if you keep it in this form, this refers to the basically the K value, the brightness value of the pixel. But if we add an index of zero, so you take bracket zero bracket, that now refers to the value in red of the red channel. And if we change this zero instead to a one, that would be the green channel, of course, change it to a two, and you've got the blue channel. So that's how we can access the values in each channel. Now we can write an expression that will hopefully do the job for us. Um, and I'm going to make this expression more generalized instead of explicitly write the name here. We're going to use target T. So again, if I want to, to look at the, the red channel, we say target T, 0. And of course, if I point this then at an image, you know, I can point it at any image I want, a new instance of any image, when I use target T here. So let's make an expression such as if, now what, if what? Well, if the value here in red, now I'm going to make a guess here. So first let's put target T. If the value in red, if it is greater than, I'm going to say the sum 
of the other two channels, the values that are in the other two channels. It, it wouldn't look like a red pixel if the values in the other two channels were greater than the value in red. I know that to be true. That has to be true. So red things have to have values that are greater than the sum of the other two channels, I think. I, I really think that's true. So I'm going to make a first guess here that we'll put a, uh, a well, oh, I'm going to put a parenthesis here so that we'll have a way to do another cool trick. T1 plus something like that. Now, if this is correct, then what we're saying is if it's red, do something. And what we should do is make a mask. So I'm going to output white. If it's not true, then let's just output black. That should do the trick. That should allow us to create a mask of some sort. So I'm going to make a copy of this image. I don't have much room to make copies of images on the screen here. So uh, I'm going to put it all the way down here in this corner and drag it back. Here's a copy of the image that we're working on. And let's see if we can make a mask-like thing of just the red stuff. Indeed. Look at that. So all these blips should be red things. Let's zoom in. Well, undo and redo. These two are obvious. If you look at this one here and this one here, those are definitely red. And then we have a couple here and here. And those show up as well. But we even get other things. Now let's look more closely at some of these other things. I see a little triangle of things here. And perhaps there is something here. But because we're not evaluating based on brightness, indeed there could be red things in individual pixels, but they're also in the noise because they're not very bright. So if we want to kind of moderate the number of red little pixels that we're detecting, we can just make it a little bit harder for it to, for this to evaluate to be true. Um, that is, we can multiply the sum of these two by some number, make it a little bit bigger. I'm just going to make a guess here of uh, times 1.5, 50% more. If it's 50%, it's got to be that much more in the red to be qualifying as true here. So let's see if that helps us. I'm going to undo, and let's do it again. All we're trying to do is just get the major ones. Oh, actually, I think that's a good value. Yeah, we have these guys here and a group of them there, and that seems to be pretty close. So let's say that we now have our red pixels. Now, we could be a little clever here and also do the blue pixels and make a single mask that takes care of them all, but I want to keep it simple here. Let's just call this our red blip mask. We'll do them one at a time. Red blip mask. And then we apply it to the image that we want to work on. Now, if we look closely here at the image, I'm going to zoom in and look around at some of these pixels. What you'll see, um, let me see if I can find, this might be a good example here is that although, let me uh, not show the mask here, although we're capturing, if you will, the core of red, because these values are really red, these values are also red, but now they either don't meet our criterion here, or um, because, and I'll tell you one of the reasons is, because uh, I have actually blurred and smoothed this image and so on, so even though they were originally primary red, now they've started to blend into the background. So what do we do to make sure we're really encompassing any red blips that we have found? Um, I would just dilate the mask a little bit. So let's show the mask again. And what we want to have happen is we want to basically grow everywhere we've detected a little bit. Well, that's easy enough. We just take our mask here, I'll put it here, and uh, use a morphological transformation. We want to dilate, and we want to do a very, very small amount, because we can just keep dilating. So. Uh, uh, yeah, sure, an element of three, make a little plus, and then just apply this to the mask. 
and now we've dilated this a little bit. And if we needed more, we, we would go more. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna worry about it to be perfectly honest. Well, maybe we'll do one more. I did you see what I did? I applied it to the image, not the mask. You gotta go on the mask. There. That looks like that's gotta be encompassing. Truly, truly getting that red pixel. Red blip, I should say. Okay, now we have our our red blips everywhere. Mask. Now we got to do something about them. And uh, another M tool would probably be useful here. It's the multi scale median transformation. What we can do, and actually four layers might be just fine here, is replace wherever this is by the residual by everything bigger than the, the pixel-like layers here, much bigger. And so in this case, a group of 16 pixels is probably sufficient because we're looking at very, very small features here. So let's try to apply the multi-scale uh, multi median transform to the image with the mask in place. The only thing that should be affected are the red pixels. So there we have it. Here's the before, and here's the after. Now, if you look in detail, really detail, I mean, you'd probably never notice unless you zoomed into 16 times here. There is actually a patch here. It's uh, kind of a smooth-like patch because that's what is being replaced into here. I personally don't think it matters when you're zoomed out. It's just getting rid of all these little red blips. However, if you wanted to go yet one more step, you could increase the noise while we're right here of that little region and probably make it ma uh, match the surrounding pixels a little bit better. And that would be the, the final step to do the best you possibly could do. So it's a noise generator. Now you have to find the right level of noise. So to do this properly, I guess I should make a, uh, I'll just look at this one little spot here, <laughs> but I'll make a preview so I can see what's going on. We want it to be Gaussian. And I can tell you, it's probably gonna be a smaller value than that. Let's just try 0.05 and see what happens. Ooh, even smaller than that, let's try 0.05. Huh. Now these other pixels look a little bit blurrier, um, so maybe we'll even make this some other tiny number. So in my particular case, this isn't a great match, but if you haven't uh, smoothed your image in advance, then the technique I'm showing would work just fine. If you just want to put a little bit of uh, noise in there, variation in there. This applies to many other instances. In this instance, I don't think it's critical though. So if we want to, we can apply that. I'm not gonna worry about it in this instance though. So that took care of the, the red ones. If we wanted to do kind of the same thing, all we need to do here is change our expression around. So we're evaluating, uh, in this case, it would be the blue, and we would sum the other two, the zero and the one here probably keeping the moderation, uh, that 1.5 factor, still in place. And then this should uh, give us the blue blips. Let's see if it works. I would need to make a copy, but you know what I'll do? Yeah, let's just make a copy so I can get the blue blips. So these are hopefully our blue ones. It does look like these are the blues. I'm going to remove that mask and put this one in its place. Of course, we'll want to dilate that mask just as we did a moment ago.
and then apply the multimedian multi-scale median transformation and that should take care of the blue blips in the image and there they go and so now we end up with a much cleaner image without the confetti of all of that color so the point of this demonstration is to consider when uh, encountering a problem such as what I demonstrated, consider not only the brightness of pixel values to try to handle a situation, but also the colors. If especially if they happen to be, in this case, like primary colors where they were very distinct, that makes it much easier to find some condition you can use to uh, potentially generate a mask and take care of the problem.